Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I'm going to show you what my overclock settings are for my RTX 4090. Now I just want to put a bit of a disclaimer out here. Even if you have the same make and model RTX 4090 as me, each card has a different potential. You may be able to overclock higher or you may not be able to overclock as high. That's just the way it goes. We call this the silicon lottery. There is a variance in the quality of, of the silicon that's used to produce these chips. Uh, second thing I want to make a disclaimer is overclocking can come with risks, but you can mitigate those risks significantly if you can keep your temperature down. And of course, you're not using outlandish settings that are unreasonable. Now, you're going to need two tools, and that is MSI Afterburner and um, GPU-Z. These things uh, will help you get a stable overclock. Now, the reason why I use GPU-Z is because this has a sensor that tells you everything about your card. It tells you your core clock, your memory clock, your driver, whether you're using um, resizable bar, so on and so forth. What what the bus speed is of your PC Express slot right now, you can see um, it's at 4.0, but it's currently running at 1.1 because of power saving. Now, if I was to start a render test, you can see it just boosts straight up to 4.0 straight away. So anyway, this tool is very, very effective. It also tells you all your temperatures and voltages and power consumption figures. Now, the one what we're going to be using this for in particular is your GPU voltage, because I'm going to show you guys how to um, basically make a curved overclock. This is a bit more specific to your card. And for me, I think this is the most stable way rather than just putting in a base figure into the core clock. So right now my card is using under one volt because it's at idle. Um, so what I'm gonna do is first get MSI Afterburner up. I'm gonna plot in everything other than the core clock. So I'm gonna put the power limit up to maximum. I'm using an MSI Supreme X. So it's got a 520 watt power limit. If you're using something like the ASUS Strix OC, you'll have a 600 watt. Even the Founders Edition has a 600 watt. But then again, if you're using something like the Zotac, Trinity that has barely any power limit increase. So it all depends on your card, what this maximum figure is. You may have a bit more, like 115 or, or you may have less. So don't um, worry about that. This is card specific. The 40 series seems to benefit a lot from using more voltage. Most people will get 1.1 volts as a maximum. I wouldn't personally go over that unless you're using water cooling. But most people will have access to 1.1 volts as a, as a maximum. But for me, for some reason, this card only goes up to 1.07 volts. Even if I plot 1.1, it won't you won't use it. I'm not too sure why. I've had two of these cards now. This card does 1.07. My previous card did 1.1, and they both both perform the same. So I'm not really complaining about not being able to achieve that voltage. Anyway, um. The core clock, again, we're going to leave for now. We're not going to touch that. We're just going to leave that at zero. My memory clock, my card is happy up to 1900. And these cards have error correction. So you're probably wondering, oh, you're, you're probably losing performance after this. Um, I've checked literally with 50 megahertz increments and I gain performance at every step. So I know even using 1850 is better than me using 1500. I've really, really checked that to make sure. So anyway, with these settings inputted, you want to bring up GPU-Z again, keep it on the sensor tab. Uh, you want to go down to your GPU voltage. Where is that? It's right here. Let's make sure that your software always has um, window always on top because you want to see what this voltage is in real time. I'm going to put up something like Final Fantasy 15 benchmark just to get a uh, 4K load going. And you want to test at a higher resolution because it puts greater power draw on your system, on your card, so that way you'll stress the card as much as you can. So this is at 4K. Now if we go down to the BP voltage, you can see my card will do 1.07 volts as a You're maximum. Good. That's You're all good. I needed to find out. And this is going to be the point, the voltage point you're going to plot your overclock to. And you can see my card at stock does 2835 megahertz. Just bear that in mind. So I've got all I need. 
I'm going to now bring up MSI Afterburner. I can minimize uh, GPU-Z. With that knowledge, I press Control F. It brings up your voltage frequency curve editor. And at the bottom, you can see the voltage axis. And at the side, you can see your frequency axis. So what you want to do is plot 10.7, 1.07, which is what we um, highlighted as my maximum voltage. I've clicked on that. And now I want to put in my core clock by raising the megahertz. I know my card is happy at 195 plus on the core. That works out to about um, 30, 60 megahertz on the core clock. But of course, that's like when I'm at like sub 30 degrees. Once I start getting up to gaming temperature, like 60 plus, that will drop down to like 30, 30 megahertz or maybe 30, 15 or something like that. So you hit apply. Now, the second thing you want to make sure is whether you've got a 1.07 maximum voltage or 1.1, you want to make sure whatever voltage point you've selected that nothing beyond that voltage point is higher. So this, you want to have a nice flat line because, for example, my card only likes 1.07. If my card could also do 1.1 as a maximum voltage, chances are those core clocks um, will be higher at that voltage. and that can lead to instability. So you want everything to be nice and flat. As long as it looks nice and flat, um, you're fine. So that is the overclock I'm gonna run. You can also plot a custom um, fan curve if you wanna just run a more aggressive fan curve than the stock to help keep temps under control. I'll leave that up to you. I'm not gonna get into that. So we wanna confirm that the overclock has taken effect. The best way to check those clocks is just basically run that same benchmark again. And you can see now, once this is fully loaded up, that my new core clock is over three gigahertz. Before it was uh, 2835, which was my stock. You're good. So that is all my overclock settings. That is the method I use. Now I'm gonna show you a um, side by side comparison and show you how much performance I gained from doing this. Susano, protect me.
think I see something. Does it get any more cosy than Hogsmeade?